Y'all, I'm so freaking happy, all right? Okay, so literally 45 minutes ago from the time I'm recording this video, Dana released a tweet saying, Hoot Hoot, we're back October 15th. Finally, some confirmation, finally. And of course she released this dope ass, like season three poster, like she did with when season two was announced. And I'm so excited. Now, I know some people are gonna be in the comments be like, I've known since, I've known since however long that it was gonna come out on October 15th. Like, okay, I heard the rumors too, but I didn't believe them because they didn't come from Dana herself. And there's a thing in this fandom where people like to troll, be like, new leaks, new this, new that. And it's never the case. So this, this fandom has given me trust issues. But since it has come from Dana Terrace herself, I'm believing it and I can't wait. So we we finally got a set date of it being October 15th, which I should probably check when that is. Okay, so that's on a Saturday. It's coming out on a Saturday in October. I'm so excited. We don't know what time yet, I don't think. But as you know, season three didn't get a full season. It's three 45 minute specials. And so the first special we're getting in October, but unfortunately we're not getting the second or third part of the specials until 2023. But at least we're getting something because it's been such a long, It's been, okay, it's been June, July, August, September. Okay, so it's been like four months of hiatus, which has felt like so much longer, honestly. I'm just glad to finally get some news. So I figured in this video, uh, while I'm fangirling, I'll also try and go over the things I realize in this poster, like an analysis kind of thing, and try to predict things for season three. Those of you that have come to my live streams in the past, you've probably seen people ask me what I think of season three, and I always tell them, I don't know what's gonna happen in season three. Anything can happen. And now that we have the season three poster out, I'm gonna try and decipher what I think is gonna happen, so stick around for that. When I tell you I was not expecting the season three announcement, to happen on a fucking Wednesday at one o'clock in the afternoon? Let me tell you something. I was shooketh. I was literally sitting by my grandmother who had just gotten home from getting operated on. I'm like, I gotta go. She's <laughs> like, Grandma, you're fine. I need, to, I need to do this. <laughs> She's fine though. I think I've fangirled enough and I'm really excited. So we're going to get into this. I also have a pulled up on Photoshop so I can turn up the saturation and the brightness to see maybe if there's things in the backgrounds that'll be easier to see. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna look at it the way it is before adjusting it in anything. And then after I look at that, I will turn up the brightness to see if anything has changed. So right off the bat, one of the first thing I realized was they do have their palisman. For a while now, I've been saying, I think they had their palismans with them when they went through the portal, but people were like, but we didn't see them. But their palismans are on their persons a lot of times and we don't see them in the show. So it made sense for me that they would go to the human realm with them because it just made more sense plot wise. And they are, because we see Amity holding ghost. We see little rascal. The designs on these characters are looking an awful lot like beta versions. They're kind of looking like they're beta versions. Luce is wearing her beta outfit with the striped shirt. So usually it used to be this. It used to be just purple and white, but there's another like purple stripe here, which I believe Pilot Luz or Beta Luz had the striped shirt. So we're getting a little bit of Beta Luz in here and her hair's also longer. She's wearing the beanie. She's wearing Lucia's beanie. So we're getting, we're getting like Beta Luz. We're getting Beta Luz. And um, I was talking a little bit to Johnny before I turned on my camera. And she was saying how there's, she hopes there's a time skip. And I hope it's not too much a time skip though, because if we get anything like what we got with Amphibia, where it was like 10 years later, it will destroy me. Based off of the poster itself, it doesn't look like that's gonna be the case. But I'm just saying time skips for some reason make me very emotional and I'm emotional off as it is. I need to calm down. You probably can't understand what I'm saying right now. <laughs> So I'll just start with Luce. When we watched King's Tide and we saw her get that scratch on her eyebrow, I didn't think it was gonna turn into a scar. But later on, Dana, released the more art she did where it was Luce, Hunter, Amity, Gus, Willow, and V. And it showed Luce had like the bandage on it and there was like a little scar forming. So I guess she does have a scar there now. So she's like twinning with Hunter, I guess. Obviously not as drastic as Hunter's. And she's also wearing Ida's jacket still, which I love because I love that outfit for her. She's also wearing like green sweatpants, it looks like. Which I would have personally, I would have thought she would be more into cargo pants. I'm also noticing she has red shoes now. Whereas before she had all white shoes. So we are getting, we are definitely getting more of a beta design with this loose with the new outfit. Um, she's, her hair's also longer, which kind of saw that coming because in the Boiling Isle, she was starting to have it in the ponytail. So that is awesome. I'm loving Luz's new look here. Looks like she's holding a flashlight. They're in a cemetery of some kind. I'm not sure if that's going to be because it's happening around Halloween or if it's going to have something to do with the cemetery. I guess now I can tell you guys, uh, a couple weeks ago, the leaks came out about season three backgrounds. Someone on the show leaked them. And 
I knew for a while it was going to happen sometime in October because there were Halloween decorations in the backgrounds of one of the leaks. So I'm like, okay, it's got to be Halloween. It's got to be a Halloween related episode because we see the jack-o'-lanterns and like Halloween decorations. It could be because it's Halloween themed. It could also be because they're in a graveyard trying to search for answers. Maybe they're going to the Woodabane's parents' graves trying to see if they had any secrets. Maybe they knew something about a working portal, how how Philip and Caleb got to the Boiling Isles in the first place. Maybe they have like secrets buried or they're gonna go to their graves for something. That could also be it. But my best guess in season three is we're gonna get some backstory on the Woodbin brothers and maybe we'll find out how to make a portal to the Boiling Isles again. Okay, so now that we focused on Luce, I know I'm kind of all over the place, I'm sorry, I'm excited. Uh, I also want to get into the other character designs. So Gus is wearing a beanie. It's kind of hard to see what he's wearing because he is behind Luce's flashlight. Uh, it looks like he's also wearing a t-shirt of some kind. He, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised they're not really hiding their ears. I think it's because in a lot of, I've seen a lot of Morning Mark comics and they're always hiding their ears because, you know, it's the human realm and humans kind of freak out when we see something out of the ordinary. Most of us, I should say. I'm kind of surprised that I just noticed none of them are having their ears covered up. Willow looks like she has black glasses again. Maybe that, maybe it's the lighting, maybe, or maybe, you know, that's just Dana's way of drawing it. She has black glasses now. Uh, she, her hair's also longer. It's, they're in, like, pigtail braids. She has a design on her shirt, a lightning bolt, perhaps? Uh, I can't really tell. She's looking awfully concerned. When Willow's concerned, you know we got, uh, we got, we got problems, because Willow ain't afraid of anything, okay? We, if Willow is anxious about something, we all need to start being anxious. And then we're gonna move up to Hunter. Hunter, his hair is getting longer. He no longer has that strand that does this. Hunter, my poor sweet baby, is still looking exhausted. He's still got the bags under his eyes. Hunter, my sweet child, you are in the human realm. Please get, like, take a couple days to just sleep. You are too young to have bags under your eyes, you poor thing. He also looks very scared and anxious. Uh, he has a plain, it almost looks like a v-neck sweatshirt on. Um, so they're all wearing pretty normal human clothes. Then next is Camilla. I saw Camilla with the bat. I'm like, oh, badass mama bear coming out. <laughs> she has replaced the chancla with a bat. She is ready to take names and kick some ass. Oh my god, I love this with Camilla. Camilla, her hair's also gotten longer. She's wearing a heart pennant, it seems. I'm thinking that's a locket. There's like something heart-shaped near her chest underneath the plaid shirt. And she, again, she's holding the bat. Where the hell is the bat? I saw it earlier. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Okay. So I don't think this is the one V was holding. In yesterday's lie, we saw... Uh, hold on. My friend Tim's calling me. I forgot where I left off. <laughs> okay, we've left off with Camilla. I don't remember if I finished my thought with V, so I'm just going to go over it again real quick, just in case I didn't. Um, but in yesterday's lie, we saw V have Lucia's, Beta Luce's uh, bat uh, when she was going to smash in the mirror with losing it. And so she doesn't seem like she's using that bat. She must have a different bat. But it would have been a nice, it would have been a cool little Easter egg if she did have that, but I'm not complaining because, you know. I'm also seeing the eyeballs. Don't worry, I'll touch on the eyeballs after behind Camilla. Uh, and then we also have V in the background, still with Camilla, obviously, makes sense. She seems to be wearing... I don't know if that's cartoon candy. Like, you know those those cartoon candies? I'll, I'll just put a picture on the screen because it's better than me trying to mime it out. Uh, but it looks like she's got a turtleneck with a candy on it of some sort. And then, of course, we got Ghost. Ghost looks a little beat up, but Ghost got some scratches. Maybe that's just the shadowing. I don't know. Uh, little rascal. Let's look a little rascal. And then, of course, in the background, we got Bellos, his goopy-looking ass, his dementor-looking ass in the background. Um, on one side of the tree, and then on the other side of the tree, we see all the eyeballs, uh, that we saw in Bellos's mind, the Palismans had all the eyeballs, and then, of course, in King's Tide, we saw all the eyeballs when, after Luz put the glyph on Bellos, and he turned into, like, his monstrous cursed form. So, I'm gonna turn up the brightness now, to see if I can pick up on anything, and maybe turn the contrast down. Yep, contrast down, brightness up. There's a skull of some kind. It looks like a bird skull. Um, I don't know if that's gonna play into the lore at all. Maybe have backstory. Maybe the Woodabanes, uh, were had a thing for birds? And would explain, uh, Caleb's palisman being a little rascal? 
Or it could just be that the Clawthorns have seemingly always been a bird palisman family, and that could have been it, because a lot of people are theorizing that Caleb dated a Clawthorn. So there's lots of possibilities in this. Um, again, I think they're in a graveyard of some kind. There's tombstones everywhere. There's nothing that you can really make out on them. Like, there's no... Uh, writing of any kind. I feel like I'm MatPat right now doing like a FNAF video. I'm just gonna get up in here real quick to get a closer look. I don't think there's anything else I can really see. Look, I'm literally looking in the leaves of the tree right now because Dana is, can put such subtle hints in. I'm literally looking in between the tree leaves. Oh, I also noticed Camilla seems to have like a, maybe that's a gray, a gray streak of hair. That could also be the lighting. But it, it kind of looks like a gr gray streak of hair, so maybe they've been in the Boiling Isles for longer than I had originally thought. If she's got gray hair forming now, that or it's been so stressful having five other children along with Luz live with you that you start to get gray hairs, which I mean, girl, more power to you. I couldn't take care of a single child, so. All the love, love for Camilla. Oh, also, I don't think... I just realized I didn't comment on Amity. How can I not comment on Amity? She's my favorite. Uh, so Amity, uh, I was talking about this with Johnny earlier. Um, it looks like they re-dyed her hair because Amity's always had that little, like, that little sliver, like, right here of brown. And she doesn't have that here anymore. It also, her hair looks lighter. Originally, I thought, you know, maybe it faded because they've been here for so long. But it also looks longer. There's, it's a different color. So... I'm thinking maybe they've been dying it since they've been in the human realm. The top part of her hair looks darker, so maybe those are her roots coming in. And maybe they're not redying it. I don't know! <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think how many years would have passed. Because her hair is pretty long. That looks like at least, like, a year. It's been at least a year because... Okay, so Luce's father died sometime in August, I believe. And that was where reaching out took place. If I'm remembering correctly, that was within a month of the Day of Unity. Yes, that was within a month of the Day of Unity. So let's say they got there somewhere September, October-ish. There's no way this would have... Her hair would have grown this fast. So it must have been at least a year. Like a year minimum, maybe. They've been trying to get back to the Boiling Isles. I also love her outfit. She's wearing a pink shirt with what looks like overalls. Or no, no, not overalls. What is that? It's like a dress vest? I don't speak fashion. That's the one gate trait I didn't inherit. Um, and she's also got leggings of some kind on. And of course she's got ghost, which I commented on earlier. I'm taking it all in as best I can, but I'm like overstimulated right now with all of this new information. Okay, so I think that's it for my observations. Um, now I'm going to try and piece together what I think is going to happen in season three. Um, my guess is if it's been over a year, there's no way Luce has been taking it easily. So much happened in King's Tide. She lost Ida, she lost King, she lost her found family. You know, Willa lost her dad's, Gus lost his father, Amity lost her father's siblings, also Adalia, but I really don't think she cares, uh, because she's a bitch and I don't like Adalia. So everyone lost someone in the Boiling Isles that they had to leave behind when they went through the portal door. I think it's taking a toll on all of them but especially Luce, because she does blame herself. I'm going to try not to cry when I go through this. I, I, I just feel so bad for Luce. Like, I can't help but be emotional for her. Let's not cry. This is a happy thing. Season three is coming back. Don't cry. Don't fucking cry. Ever since Luce found out that Philip would have been was Bellos, or as I like to refer to him as Philip what a bitch ever since she found out she's felt guilty she's like I was part of his plan it's my fault this is all my fault she blames herself for everything that's happened whereas obviously the others I don't think the others know I really need to rewatch season one and two uh because my memory's a little hazy but if I'm remembering correctly she didn't tell anyone other than Ida and King so Hunter doesn't know that Luce was the one that helped Philip, not knowing he was Bello. So I don't think any of them realize how much Luce is blaming herself for all of this. The only people that are aware are, like I said, Lilith, Ida, and King, and Hootie. And I'm also going based off of what I saw when I watched the psychoanalysis of Luz Noceda, or the part of Luz Noceda nobody talks about, at the end when Bunny Skies was saying how, when they pointed out that Luz is closing herself off in that drawing that Dana Terrace did. And I had never noticed it before, but now I can't help but see that she is closing herself off. She's all this self-hatred and doubt and blaming herself. 
it's gonna come crashing down and it's gonna make season three so hard to watch i feel like i'm gonna shed a lot of tears for loose but plot wise i'm pretty sure it's been about a year since they've been in the human realm of course i'm going based off their hair growth so it could have been longer than that i'm not entirely sure uh it's also hard to tell if any of them have gotten taller because of the angle it's at we don't have really anything to compare the height to uh but we can guess it's been about a year and my guess is in that entire time, Luz has been working tirelessly to find a way back to the Boiling Isles because, you know, she has to make sure King and Ida are okay. And, you know, she's, she's grown to care for Rain because she knows of their backstory with Ida. And Luz made a lot of friends on the Boiling Isles. Obviously, you know, the rest of the Owl House gang is going to want to get back to their loved ones. So I'm assuming while they've been in the human realm... Maybe here and there they've dabbled in some things. Maybe, hopefully, they've taken a little bit of a break. But knowing Lou, she doesn't know how to take a break when she's really focused on something. Again, this is all speculation. I've never been a channel that does, like, theories and things like that. I'm trying my best here. The only, the only time I've ever done theories or analysis videos is for The Owl House. Like, it's the first show I ever tried, even though I started so many other shows before The Owl House. I'm, I'm again I'm apologizing because I'm really bad at keeping my thoughts together and this keeps distracting me and my friend Tim called me halfway through this video so I'm like all over the place as I was talking about earlier with the Woodbane parents family um they have they have possible knowledge like thinking on it now they could have possible knowledge on how to open a portal because it does beg the question of how did Philip and Caleb get to the boiling aisles we saw Luz trying to reconstruct it from the portal it's not something and they were little kids when they went to the boiling aisles it's not something little kids could do so it makes it begs the question if as a family if they were witch hunters and were working on a portal to the boiling aisles maybe they have like the ingredients or they are aware of like some s summoning ritual something like that or maybe there's like witches in the human realm there could be witches in the human realm that survived the salem witch trials uh, obviously this is all speculation i'm just trying to piece things together like to touch on that again maybe as a family they made the portal to the boiling isles um but it was probably in its prototype stage and didn't work exactly or maybe the kids snuck in even though they didn't get to do all the tests on it yet and that's how they got trapped there but maybe there's some like buried secrets or maybe there's some living relatives of the the Woodabanes that have you know succeeded maybe that guy jacob is a Wittabane, um like ancestor or something maybe he's related maybe he has some answers maybe they'll go back to that um i could see that happening which would also explain why v looks so worried and they all look a little they all look like a little on edge but v looks like scared almost maybe that's what they're gonna be doing like i said earlier it could explain the graves because maybe they have to go and find you know the Wittabane headstones to look up the name so they could get like a family tree thing going on or maybe they buried the secrets with them maybe that explains why in their graveyard it could also just be be because it's going to be a halloween episode which i love halloween so i'm here for that i'm gonna try and edit this as best i can to make sense i'm hoping we get some backstory with the Wittaben brothers i've always wondered that because we saw glimpses in hollow mind of you know philip's relationship with his brother how caleb met the witch and you know, fell in love and Philip murdered his brother. I'm hoping we get backstory onto them because I would like to know more, like, the backstory. Like, I appreciate it being told and I understand that with the series being cut short, they might not have all that time. But I would like some clarification as to the would have been bloodline or what they were like as brothers. Because then we would also understand Hunter better, who Hunter's based off of, who Caleb, the original Caleb, was, who Flapjack's original owner was. I'm also hoping at the time the, the, the Owl House kids are living with Camilla, Camilla sees just how much of a life Luz has made for herself on the Boiling Isles and how she has done what she wanted for Luz all along. She just wanted Luz to make friends. And that's what she did on the Boiling Isles. She literally befriended enemies of hers. Amity used to be like her number one enemy in I Was a Teenage Abomination and at the co convention episode. Amity was like her worst enemy and she befriended her. At one point, Hunter was her enemy. Now she's friends with Hunter, almost siblings. She's made life better for so many people. And I'm hoping, you know, 
Willow will say how Luce has helped her, and Hunter will say how Luce has helped her, and Amity will say how Luce has helped her, and Gus will say, you know, and so on and so forth, and she'll realize, like, all I ever wanted for my daughter was for her to make friends, and to not stand out, and to, like, build close relationships, and it seems like in the first episode of this series, we didn't understand that Camilla supported her interests in all those things. She just wanted her to make friends and to do it in a healthy way. But as we see throughout the series, as we get more glimpses into Camilla as a mother, we see that she was always supportive of her of Luz's interests. And when V was trying to throw out like the tinfoil swans and the Azora thing, she's like, you always love this stuff. Like in that moment, you see her regret trying to like change Luz or to send her away to be somewhat normal, like think inside the box. Like, she realized she didn't want that, but I hope she tells Luce that. Hey guys, editing Morgan here, and I just wanted to point out a few things that I thought of as I was editing this, things that I left out. As for season three predictions, I'm predicting we're going to get a King growth spurt, because once King found out that he was a Titan, he's like, I think I'm going to have a growth spurt soon, and it's been over a year. So I wouldn't be surprised if we cut back to King and the Collector, and King has grown up. Um, because we all know Titans get huge. We don't know exactly how long it takes for them to get that big, but I'm thinking King will be at least like a decent size bigger, uh, but that's just my prediction. Another thing I predicted was um, maybe we'll get some Collector backstory, how the Collector ended the, up there in the first place, you know, um, or we'll see the Collector just trying to be a kid and have fun and not understanding that his actions have consequences, like he's not trying to hurt people, but he doesn't understand how powerful he is, so he ends up hurting people in the process by accident, and maybe King helps him understand that. I don't know, but those were just some things I wanted to put in here to include in the analysis and the predictions bit of this video, so yeah, that's pretty much it. This is all so much to take in. I, I That was literally attempt number three of trying to collect my thoughts and predict what's going to happen in season three. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure anyone could probably guess these things. I'm just trying my best here. The things were released like an hour ago, so obviously I haven't had the chance to see anyone else's opinions. I don't think anyone's that quick of a video editor, um, but I'll be looking at other people's thoughts, things like that. Also, leave in the comments below what you think is going to happen. Uh, predictions, do you have things you noticed maybe I missed in the poster? Uh, but yeah... I think that's going to be it for this video, guys, because I just keep confusing myself and, like, going in holes and... It, it's hard to think right now. It's it's all so sudden that we got this trailer and I'm still kind of processing it. But I hope you guys somewhat enjoyed this video. Uh, I figured you guys would want this type of thing since we've done it in the past for other Owl House uh, trailers, things like that. If the trailer comes out, I will be recording a reaction to that, so don't you worry about that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are as excited as I am for Season 3. And I will see you in the next video. Peace. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Bye!